now we're talking with Jill Gonzalez. She's a spokesperson for WalletHub.com, and we're going to talk about a very interesting uh, study that just came out. 2015 best and worst states for teen drivers. So what, what a topic. <laughs> so thank you much for being with us, uh, Jill. How are you? Thank you for having me. I'm great. How are you? Excellent. So let's start. I mean, where to start? I mean, it's 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 a big big topic because uh, more more teens are driving, especially now in the summer. I think now they're out of school, and uh, they're really want, wanting to go out and drive. But also, driving is a very dangerous thing for a teenage driver. So um, tell us about like t tell us about the study, please. Yeah, you're exactly right. Actually, in the summer months, an average of 250 teens are killed in car accidents each month. So I think it's definitely a timely thing that we're talking about. And to really look at the states overall, all 50 states, to see which are the safest and kind of the least safe for teen drivers, we looked at 16 different metrics. So, of course, we included things like teen driver fatalities, but also the average cost of car repairs, how much it costs to add teen onto your insurance, and how much your premium will go up because of it, and of course the presence of impaired driving laws and other driving laws. Yeah, that's why I, may, I live in Florida. Our show is national, so it impacts everybody around the country. But uh, I was kind of surprised to see that Florida is not there in the top 10 as the most uh, dangerous, I think, because here in Florida is one of the few states that we don't have a really strict law against the uh, using of cell phones while driving. So um, can you talk about like top top and like, most dangerous and safest places and then like about that that in particular? Sure. So Florida actually ranked 26, so just one under average. But when you're talking about laws, it actually ranked 30, 41st. So overall 26, but laws 41st. So you're right, they do have pretty lenient driving laws there. Fortunately, we haven't seen it really impact the safety for teen drivers yet. But in terms of the safest states, the top 10 are New Jersey, Rhode Island, Nevada, Connecticut, Illinois, Delaware at number five, then Hawaii, Massachusetts, Oregon, and New York at number one. So you did see a, quite a few uh, northeastern states there. Yeah. And then as far as the bottom ten, we have Maine, Mississippi, Oklahoma, Nebraska, Missouri, Wyoming, North Dakota, Montana, and South Dakota at number 50. So... Is there a relationship? I can see here a little bit of the dense, uh, relation between density of population because South Dakota is like not very populated, but New York is. So is there a relationship in that too? And again, like in New York, at least in New York City, not only teens, like almost nobody drives there. Right, exactly. So, I mean, you'll see that with more crowded states. Obviously, public transportation is a lot more accessible and a lot wi more widely used. And then you're right, the states at the bottom of the list, so Wyoming, North Dakota, Montana, South Dakota, they're a lot more spread out states. So people are going to be driving more to begin with. Of course, the more you're driving, the more opportunities there are for auto accidents and things like that. Yeah. I mean, if you look just at the annual vehicle miles traveled, New York, it's about 6,600. Wyoming, it's over 16,000. Wow. So people are just driving farther to get to school, to get to work, and then back again. Yeah. So, um, uh, again, like, um, what are the other um, issues that you examine in the study? Like, um, I was thinking, I always tell when people are talking about, like, buying a new car for a, for a teenager driver, like I said, buy a manual, because at least both hands are busy doing something. <laughs> Is that one of the considerations in the study? No, well, we didn't take into consideration you know, whether the types of cars being driven. Um, we did hear from experts that teens tend to be a little bit more careful when they know that you're paying for the car. So that is one thing, you know, whether you're paying for insurance, gas, or the whole car itself, that tends to lower some accidents on the road. The other things we took into account, um, just the quality of roads to begin with, and that's something that any age driver should definitely be concerned about. We saw huge fluctuations here, too. So in Nebraska, only 5% of the roads have been deemed in poor condition. In California, 52% of the roads are in poor condition. So over half of the roads there. So again, that should probably a concern for, be a concern for most people. 
Yeah. And then like uh, another, I mean, like this is really sad that uh, you mentioned it at the beginning. I mean, a lot of uh, uh, teens uh, unfortunately die in accidents, but Connecticut is number one. And that's because, I guess, because of what you just mentioned, like more people driving, uh, maybe worse conditions in the roads and on, on these other factors. Because Connecticut, New York, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and New Jersey, almost like the same the same area. And that's the fewest, I'm sorry, that's the fewest uh, deaths per, 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 per drivers, right? Right, the fewest teen fatalities there. And that's a couple things. So yes, quality of road still plays a part, but also just how strict the laws are. So uh, many of those states have really good graduated driver licensing program laws. And those are things like occupant protection. So how many passengers are allowed in the car? Is there a driving curfew for younger drivers? Usually the cutoff is 11 or midnight. Uh, how strict are the impaired driving laws, the distracted driving or texting while driving laws like you mentioned previously? And then of course things like red light and speeding camera laws too. Yeah, those are kind of controversial because, I mean, like, again, here in Florida where I do most of my driving, I go around the country a lot, but uh, this is where I live. Um, a lot of people, like, there's, like, a big controversy. Are they legal or they're not? Some cities are taking them out and that. But even, like, if they're not legal or give a, a um, an actual ticket, I think just, like, seeing it on the road, like, like gives you, like, a little warning, a mental warning, I think, right? Yeah, I definitely agree with you. I think especially for teens, too. So if you remember, like, these kids do not have the experience that most other drivers have. So even seeing those things like a red light or speeding camera, I think that in and of itself acts as a deterrent to speeding or to running red lights. Because once you develop those reckless driving habits, they really tend to follow you around for the rest of your life. Yeah. So another thing that is pretty interesting nowadays, cars are making are more available, I think. I mean, they're like really cool cars for like not very not a lot of money and i guess that gives access to more uh, younger drivers is there uh you said you, you there wasn't a consideration the type of car but like the value actual of the the actual value of the cars is like something that parents have to take uh, consideration into while buying a car for their teens right yeah i think definitely just choose i mean of course a teen is going to want to the newest coolest kind of car but really taking a safety into account as a parent of course, is really important. And then one thing to consider is the premium increase. After adding a teen driver to your auto insurance policy, you'll be amazed how much these are. So we looked, again, all over the country. We saw increases that really start at around 50%. Wow. So, yeah, so they start at 50%. Uh, the top 10 were usually actually in the 60s or 70s. And a place, again, you see this northeastern influence Maine, Rhode Island, New Hampshire, your premium will double. So it will increase by over 100% just by adding one teen driver to your auto insurance policy. Wow, and that's before they go to college. <laughs> Which yeah, is another exactly. huge expense. So, um, uh, and again, like, so what's the, the, the overall recommendations do you have like for the audience? What should parents do with kids? I mean, we know what kids should do, and hopefully they're listening, like, pay attention to the road, don't text and drive, don't drink and drive, and, like, obey the laws. But what about for parents? I think for parents, the key here is practice, practice, practice. I mean, the more you drive with your kids, the better. And that's both when you are driving, way before they can even get their permit or anything like that, but also when your child does have their permit, drive with them as much as possible. Go driving with them when the weather is bad, so snow, ice, rain, darkness, um, you know, or maybe the crazy on or off ramp that uh, you know that you hate every time you yourself are driving. Taking your kids through those courses, I think, is very important. You know you're going to be de they're going to be dealing with them by themselves pretty soon. Excellent, Jill Gonzalez from uh, WalletHub.com, and uh, that's the website where uh, our audience can go and find more information about these and other studies, right? Yep, WalletHub.com/edu. Excellent. Thank you very much for your time, Jill, and for these uh, very valuable topics and information. Anytime. Happy driving. Thank you. Bye. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.